Hey, what's up, guys? My name is the channel. Welcome to another Sparky Devlog. This is Devlog number six. So, this is going to be a short one because I'm extremely busy and uh, working on Sparky. I'm extremely busy and I've just had a very busy week and everything is kind of broken right now because what I'm doing right now, um, and this is really what a Devlog is about, right? I'm trying to update you guys on what I'm doing. Uh, and this is not always something to show, unfortunately, but I'm actually putting in direct 3D into Sparky, okay? So currently Sparky's renderer only supports OpenGL. Um, I want it to support both DirectX and OpenGL. The reason I'm doing that is because DirectX is just better to use on Windows. Uh, the second reason is the API is just beautiful and miles better than OpenGL. Uh, three, I'm interested to see what the performance ca uh, characteristics will be in Sparky compared to um, OpenGL. And uh, also, it is much better to design tools that use Direct 3D than OpenGL, okay? So for example, if I'm using WPF to build a level editor, uh, DirectX integrates with like a Windows application, like embedded in a Windows application, a hundred times better than OpenGL. There are very big problems with embedding OpenGL into, um, into a WPF application. So that being said, um, that's why I'm doing it. Uh, so to kind of prove my point and to actually get something working, I constructed a small demo, um, which is actually pretty large. Like, I mean, there are like 50 files almost in this solution, uh, in this project. Um, and it's kind of almost like Sparky, uh, but it, it's completely standalone. It doesn't really use Sparky. The only um, section of Sparky that it uses is the math library. Um, it's kind of uses the same API, right? I've clearly separated system uniform uh, system uniforms from user uniforms as I call them or user forms, <laughs> uh, which are basically like material uniforms. Uh, you can specify buffer layouts the same way you can in Sparky. You construct vertex buffers and, in and index buffers the same way you do in Sparky. Um, you can set uniform buffers and bind materials as you can see the same way that you do in Sparky. Uh, the shaders of course are different so uh, this is like what the HLSL shader for this little test of mine looks like, right? Uh, and that's written in HLSL, of course, and not GLSL. Um, and then there's that shader being set here. But uh, if we launch this quickly, and it's nothing special, it's just a kind of, there's a color, there's a uniform color here, and there are two textures being blended together. Um, and a, an updating uniform, which is the model matrix. Uh, and you can see kind of how that works. Um, so it's just a little demo. It basically covers everything. The one thing this is missing or the two things that's missing are cube maps um, and uh, frame buffers, right? So rendering two textures is something that I have to uh, put into this little demo. And then I'm ready to take this demo and put it into Sparky and, and wire everything up. And I was actually going to make a video um, or in this video even, I was going to draw you guys a diagram of how the uh, the architecture for supporting two rendering APIs was going to work in Sparky because it's, it's a very difficult topic. Um, when you want to support two rendering APIs, especially when there is that they are as different as you know Direct Three D and OpenGL, which operate quite differently, right? I mean, I have to say I prefer the I prefer DirectX, but um, they uh, you know uh, as in I pre I prefer DirectX API wise. The API is beautiful, at least it is for DirectX Eleven. Um, I should be saying Direct 3D 11. Uh, but anyway, when I say DirectX, I really mean Direct 3D because we're all talking about graphics here um, and particularly 3D graphics. Okay, so that being said though, um, hooking up two APIs is very difficult, um, especially doing it in a way that is actually good, right? And my uh, vision for Sparky is you should be able to basically choose the API at runtime. It shouldn't be a compile time decision. Right? Unless, of course, if you're on Mac and Linux, it's going to have to be a compile time decision because that's not going to be able to compile any direct 3D code. But the point is, um, it has to be a runtime decision. Uh, and then you have to basically end up uh, creating a layer of, of abstraction and you have to choose a point at which uh, you kind of start making API independent um, uh, code in your engine and you have to hook everything up properly and you have to make sure that you set up proper interfaces and proper Im implementations of everything. And it, it is a bit of a nightmare. It's very difficult to set up. So I, I was gonna draw you guys um, the architecture for it, but I can't find my like graphics tablet. Um, so that's unfortunate, but I, when I do, I'll probably make a video uh, detailing how that works and I'll probably put it in first and then I might make a video. But anyway, uh, that's what you see in this demo. It's pretty, it's pretty simple uh, and it demonstrates pretty much every uh, every part of DirectX that I need to put into Sparky and the actual like, 
you know, the actual code of course is just in these files here. Like for example, loading a shader in DirectX happens right here. Um, you know, textures are, are a big one. Texture 2Ds, uh, you know, happen here. It's all in all, it's a very uh, easy API to use. Okay, cool. Um, that is the first thing, that, that's the big thing that I'm working on. So there's not much to show, unfortunately, for that, except for that demo. Um, and I've also done significant refactoring in Sparky on a different branch to this, to this one, uh, which actually uh, would show um, all, you know, me creating interfaces and moving a lot of code in Sparky around to an API independent kind of layer, right? Because there has to be that independence layer, that, uh, that independent layer that the rest of the engine uses. And then of course, behind that abstraction is are the actual implementations of each feature, like a vertex buffer, an index buffer, a texture for each API. Creating that also means I can add future APIs. So I can add Vulkan, for example, which I'm planning to do in the distant future when I feel like it. Vulkan's API is kind of similar to OpenGL, so it's not very good. Um, but uh, I, I probably will add that eventually, and even maybe Metal, although I don't imagine Metal will happen anytime soon. Vulkan, though, is probably going to be the next one after Direct 3D11, but that won't happen for a while. Okay, cool. Anyway, all that aside, PBR-wise, I don't think much has changed. Um, I did on the other branch that I was on, I did, cr I did make materials be PBR materials, and I did I changed around a significant amount of things because there are there are things in the code that don't work with Direct 3D and that actually are wrong basically because um, if you look at something like Layer 2D uh, you'll see that I'm setting you know this uniform textures why is that happening here right why is this projection matrix being set here it's just it's all weird and DirectX kind of forces me to clean that stuff up because it's very strict about how you do things which is good because basically you know, when you're writing uh, an engine that's, that supports both, you almost want to just make OpenGL work like DirectX because that is that is the correct way, pretty much, um, or as as far as my opinion goes, anyway. Uh, okay, um, but I do have this just for fun. Um, I do have this nice kind of uh, asset that I imported. Someone suggested that I actually get some assets online instead of using cubes and planes with textures that I created myself. Uh, so I got this PBR dagger. Uh, if you just Google it, um, you can get it. Uh, this is rendered in Marmoset, which is a little PBR kind of viewing thing. It's uh, it's quite nice. It's um, Marmoset tool bag would be the appropriate, the actual application, um, which is good for like kind of authoring PBR assets as well. Uh, you can take a look at that. This is what it looks like. Um, they, they provide a lot of maps, a lot of maps that I don't support. So, um, they provide uh, this asset includes like cavity maps and AO maps, which I don't support just yet, ambient occlusion maps. Um, but uh, so I kind of did with what I could do. Uh, but this is what it looks like in Sparky. Uh, there's that dagger. Oop. I need to not set, I need to not override the glass though. Otherwise, that's going to look all funny. Um, where is that dagger material? Here it is. Um, dagger. I thought I wasn't. Hmm. Uh, I am. All right. No overriding gloss. So I'm using the default textures that came with the model. And this is what it looks like. I can even full screen it for you. Let me just move that cube out of the way. Um, cube. Goodbye. That's what it looks like. Um, I mean, it looks pretty, it looks pretty different than it does in the thing. Uh, it looks kind of all right. The, it looks like their gloss curve though is a lot higher, um, uh, or a lot more linear, meaning that it's like lower gloss values contribute to more actual reflection. It looks like obviously there, there's a bunch of post-processing on this. There is no post-processing on this whatsoever. Um, but you know, it's, I mean, it's there. Like if I move the light direction around, uh, you can kind of see how that reflects, uh, and changes the... It doesn't look too bad, I think. Um, and of course, uh, we could be also overriding the gloss um, manually, which is what I kind of put into the debug menu as well, uh, to just make it really, 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 really shiny or something like that, um, which would look kind of weird, I think. But anyway, cube can go away. Um, so here we go, gloss. So you can see how we can kind of override that gloss and make it really, I don't know what happens at low gloss values. I need to investigate that. Um, it's about some kind of boundary condition. Uh, if we kind of bring that gloss up, you can see how it becomes really, really reflective. 
Um, and you can kind of see the entire cube map through it as well. So anyway, uh, that's kind of how that works. Um, that's kind of how that looks in, in my engine in Sparky. Uh, it looks interesting. Um, so yeah, I just wanted to chuck an actual asset in, show you guys what that looks like. Um, hopefully again, when I do implement, uh, I'm still, I've still got a few things for PBR that I need to implement. So ambient occlusion maps, cavity maps to an extent, I don't even know if I will bother supporting them, but ambient occlusion maps do need to get in as do emissive maps as well, which are really easy to do. So that's what I'll do. Um, but so far I'm kind of working on that direct X thing. Uh, and that's the way it's going to go probably for another week. I should, I should be done. By next devlog, hopefully Sparky will support both OpenGL and Direct3D completely, fully, 100%. All right. Thanks for watching, guys. Hope you enjoyed this devlog. Uh, if you did, please hit the like button. Um, if you want to support Sparky and get uh, all these exclusive kind of copies of it, um, then you can support me on Patreon. Uh, if you pledge $5 or more, you get access to the version repository, which basically contains all the code that I uh, type between GitHub commits, right? So I still commit to GitHub like at least once a month, pretty much. But um, as for the code that's on my computer that is basically uncommitted, you can get access to that if you pledge $5 per month. If you really want, you know, new code every day, basically, and you really want to keep track of the development every day. Um, if you don't, of course, you, I mean, Sparky's not never going to cost money. It's not, it's, it's always free and open source. You can just wait patiently and it will be provided to you on github.com forward slash the journal forward slash Sparky. Um, also, you guys should join my Slack because Slack is pretty cool. And I, uh, I'm usually on there a lot. You can see that people like talk about stuff all the time. And I've kind of been almost treating this as like my personal, uh, kind of devlog, um, kind of blog thing. Uh, so I post like uh, photos to it all the time or like screenshots of Sparky and all that stuff. So it's a really good place to hang out and you can just join by entering your email address here. All right. Anyway, thanks for watching guys. I'll see you next devlog. Goodbye.